Oh, that's one of my favorites. <clears throat> Second Chronicles 29. And let's go over to verse um, 31. Second Chronicles 29 and verse 31. Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now ye have consecrated yourself unto the Lord. Come near and bring sacrifices and thank offerings into the house of the Lord. And the congregation brought in sacrifices and thank offerings. And as many as were of a free heart burnt offerings. And the number of the burnt offerings which the congregation brought was three score and ten bullocks, a hundred rams and two hundred lambs. All these were for a burnt offering to the Lord. And the consecrated things were 600 oxen and 3,000 sheep. But the priests, listen to this verse, this is the key verse. But the priests were too few. So they could not flay all the burnt offerings. Wherefore their brethren, the Levites, did help them till the work was ended. And until the other priests had sanctified themselves for the Levites, listen to this, for the Levites were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the time that we have here. Thank you for bringing Oscar back, Father. And I ask to open his mouth and our ears alike, Father, that they will be when a king tried to usurp the place of the priest, this king walked right into the temple and tried to do the work that the priests were supposed to do. Uzziah was his name. When he tried to do that, Leprosy came on his forehead. You guys remember this? Leprosy was on his forehead. And God told him to the priest, it's not your job to do this. He was usurping. That's how holy the work of a priest was. That's how righteous he had to be. That's how separated. Not anybody could just get up and say, I'm just going to offer a sacrifice. Couldn't happen. Not even if you were the king. Were you allowed to do that? To the price of death. And yet here we have some known priests that are allowed to offer the sacrifice. Listen to what is happening here. The people have a great revival. They want to bring all these offerings. And they begin to bring him in. And as they put him in front, they call the priest. But the Bible says here there were too few. It wasn't too few priests. There were a lot of priests. Too few sanctified priests. They had to be sanctified. They had to be committed. They had to have their heart in the right place to be able to do what they needed to do in the presence of God. It wasn't just offering the sacrifices. Let me make a stop and explain what that is. Standing behind a pulpit is easy. Singing a song, even a non-Christian can do it. Preaching under that tent, I know that I that I've known Christians who've done it. You don't have to do anything special. All you have to do is get up and open your mouth. But when it comes to the things that God desires and what comes out of him, he chooses the sanctified. That's what he chooses. There were a bunch of priests and he called them out and he says, come offer the sacrifice. And a few of them, just too few. And when they looked at the magnitude of the work, they said, we can't do it. There's too many. How are we going to do this? There's too few of us. And the Lord had a choice. Listen to the choice. The choice was the whole bunch of priests that were not sanctified and some Levites who were sanctified, but that was not their call. Nor was it their place. Here is the God who struck a king with leprosy having a choice. 
Do I choose the unsatisfied, unsatisfied, unsanctified priests who are actually have this kind of calling and this right? Or do I choose the sanctified Levites who are not called to do this? What was God's choice? Did you notice? He chose the Levites. It wasn't even their thing. The Levites were like, what do I have to do with you? They just so happened that they were sanctified. What was it? God is giving you an idea. He cares more about your relationship with him than he cares about everything else you have in your plate. He cares more about that you got up to seek his face, that you committed yourself to meditate in the scriptures, that you're living a life while not perfect, yes, committed to the king and living in his presence, doing what you have to do. He cares more about that than about being a missionary or a pastor or anything else you may think that is important. God looks at that. He looked at priests and the priests were not clean, were not righteous, were not living for God, were not even trying, and they were unsanctified, they were unprepared, and but they said, but we're priests. It's like a pastor or a missionary that says, I'm a missionary, as if that makes it everything right. I can do whatever I want to do, but I'm a missionary. I can do whatever I please, but I'm a pastor. As if we have this payment <clears throat> that we give to God and we say, God, I'm a pastor. Therefore, you know, I get to do whatever I want to do. God says, you got it wrong. You got it wrong. No, 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 no. You see these guys right here, the Levites, they don't have the call, but they were searching God. They were seeking God. They showed up in this place with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and I'm going to use them instead of the priest. And everybody was scratching their head because their book was going out the door. Because it was crazy to think that God was going to do that. The problem with God is he can do whatever he wants. So he gets up and he tells the Levites, Move in and do the sacrifice. And the Levites begin to do the sacrifice. And he said, well, wait for the priest to get it together. When they get themselves together, I'll move you guys out of the way and bring them back in. See, that right there gives you the heart of God. Holiness is something that is not a choice. Holiness is something that God desires for everybody. Listen to what it says. In verse 34 again, in chapter 29 of, first, of Second Chronicles. But the, cree, the priests were too few, so that they could not flay all the burnt offerings. Wherefore, the brethren, the Levites, did help them till the work was, was ended. And until the other priests had sanctified themselves. For the Levites were more upright and hard to sanctify themselves than the priest. It is the upright that God is looking for. Not the educated, not the title one, not the smartest one, not the ones who have a good oratory skill who can speak well, but the upright, the ones who are upright, sanctifying themselves in the presence of God. You can ask me what, what to be sanctified. The first thing that you know about sanctification is that you are separated unto God. You're not just separated from the world, the world. Holiness means that not just separated from the world, but separated unto God. What a sanctify means. There are things that while your flesh wants to touch, you don't touch them. God begins to tell you, that's not what I want for you. That's not how you, I want you to speak. That's not, but that's not enough. You also have to be committed to God in such a way that he is your center. He is everything to you. He is your passion. You wake up in, in the middle of the night and there's a smile on your face because Jesus is in your heart. You get up in the morning and you open up the scriptures because that's who you want to fellowship with. And when you have a little bit of time, rather than picking up your phone, you run to him and say, God, let's spend some time together. Being sanctified means that he is the center of everything to you. When God looks for a person to use, he does not look for the skillful. In fact, the scripture is clear. Let me tell you something else and I'll finish here. The Bible says without holiness, you will not see God. No one will see God. Without holiness, you will not see God. No one will see God. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that when you, you, just, that when you get there, you won't see him if you're not holy. Of course, that's the main meaning of everything there. When you die, you have to be sanctified to go to him. Otherwise, you will not be able to stand in his presence. It also means you're not going to know anything here. 
You're not going to get close to him if you're not looking for holiness. You're not going to receive revelation if you're not looking for holiness. If you don't separate yourself to God from the things that, that, that are in your past and you don't separate unto God, you are not going to receive the grace and the commitment and the power and the things that God has to give you. Be holy for I am holy. Be holy for I am holy. That's a scripture. You don't get to choose how you live. You live in the presence of God. He looks at Levites. He looks at priests. He has priests who have a higher calling, higher education, and everything. Prepare for it. And he looks at Levites who are committed, committed completely. But these guys do not want it. These guys are just riding on the fact that they're called missionaries. And these guys right here are committed. And God says they have less. They're even less educated, even less of the call, but they are sanctified. And God says, I choose the upright, the one who's trying to walk with me. God bless you. Yes.